right we will be talking about this very shortly this will be going to somebody free of charge very soon right i didn't do a video yesterday we had a lot on um we had to get ready for plastering which tom's now been in he's still here actually skimming up so we could get it all plastered so i didn't really have time to do a video yesterday but basically we plastered the board we put a vapor barrier on we plastered boarded uh, we cut out for all the back boxes and we finished all the first fix electrics and then now tom is in skimming and plastering this is the this is the storeroom um jen and brad uh, oh, I speed this out yesterday. You see, we've already fit the consumer unit there. It's going to have a strip light up there. It's going to have two sockets. And we're going to fit this modem. Now, the purpose of the video is what a lot of people have asked now is about cable routing, what we use, where we go, and how we do it. So I'm going to bring you up to John in a minute now, but I'm just going to talk you about the cable route. So that's the modem we're going to be using, but John will explain that. That's where the cable's going to be terminated in here. Like I say, John's going to explain everything, but that module will go on the end of there then, yeah? Yeah, so the cable comes out of that wall, it goes over the top, it drops down here, it goes into some corpex there, it goes under the ground, and then across onto that wall there, you can see it cable clipped onto the wall there, and then it runs up to the house. You can see Tom and Lee are just finishing off skimming in there now. And it runs up that wall there. It's probably the tidiest, cleanest route we can go. It drops down under the gravel, it goes up the gravel here, it cuts across here, it goes along there, and approximately, I put a mark where the wall. Where's that black marker, David? I put a little black mark in there. Yeah, so that there is where the steel armoured goes into the house. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. No, we'll talk about that now. I'm not going to bring you inside customer's house because it's a bit of an intrusion of privacy. But basically, the steel wide armoured goes in there. We've terminated it in there. Then we've swapped over to some twin and earth, some 10mm twin and earth. So the electrician, he'll connect up in a box there. And then it runs through his cellar, up into his kitchen and across to his consumer unit, which is unfortunately in the middle of the house. So the Cat 6 runs along there. And again, that drops into the cellar there because we didn't want to tack it up over this stair because it's going to look messy. It then comes back out of the cellar there. It's a Cat 6, it's exterior grade. It's tacked along there, right along there. It follows that coaxial cable up there. And then we go around the front of the building. You can see we've tacked it along there over the top of the roof little outhouse roof there it drops down the other side of the outhouse roof and it comes along and it enters into the room just behind the kitchen unit there um, but we're going to go in now and i'm going to show john and he's going to terminate the cables he's going to show you how he terminates and what he uses to terminate them yeah. right so we're with john inside now john's going to connect up um so he's going to talk you through he's going to talk about the cable he's going to tell you what he's going to connect it with and what he's going to use it to connect to as well right john over you right hi everybody so basically this is a cat 6 cable we always use cat 6 now because it gives us faster internet with the new speeds that all the companies are bringing out so if liam just takes a look in here he's on virgin he's the customer this is the virgin router this is his input and we've got four we've got two spare outputs there so what we're going to do is i'm going to put an end on this cat 6 cable here i'm going to plug it into this yellow part here and then we'll take a trip down to the garden office and i'll show you how to do that also so Liam just wants to look at these tools down here these are the tools i'm going to use i've got my crimps to crimp the plugs on a pair of nips you don't need this but it's a nice little tool if you do it quite frequently to strip the cable we've also got the little rubber grommet which goes onto the cable and we've also got the end this is a special end is this one it's an rj45 pass-through connector don't think liam will be able to see it but you can push the cables one minute one minute one minute you can push the cable straight through and out of the other side yeah which makes it easy to not twist your pairs usually you'd crimp it on try it and go oh my god i've twisted the oranges by accident and have to cut it off this way you i've never actually put one on wrong anyway off we go Right, so I'm going to put this boot on. Uh, it's not very important that you do it, but it does look a lot better if you do. So there, we're going to put it on about four inch back. Um, I'm now going to get my crimping tool. Right, well, now you're going to I'm, I'm now going to get my tool, which will strip the cable. This is a tool by Nipex. You can find it on Amazon. That's where I got it from. Um, I am working the other hand here, yeah, Liam. So basically, you put your cable in. I, you don't need that much. You probably only need about that much. But I always do a bit more, and I'll show you why in a minute that I do that bit more. A little turn, little bend up and down. You want me to put that up here, Liam, for you? How much is that tool, John? 
I think it's about 30 quid. It's yeah. really expensive, right. but as you can see, it strips the cable every time and never nips the cables underneath. Uh, so it is fantastic. And this cable is exterior grade cable. It's right? exterior grade cable. You can put it under the floor. You can put it where you want. It'll last for years and years and years. In the Cat 6, uh, we also get this little strengthener here. So I'm going to cut that off because I don't need it. So I'm going to grab my nips and I'm going to go as far back as I can watching that I don't cut any of these strands. And we'll just chop that off there and we'll put that back there. So now we need to put these in and we'll hold it up there, Liam. So how many strands are there, John? There's are six in total. And what, are they in pairs? Yes, they're in pairs. You've got orange, orange and white, blue, blue and white, brown, brown and white and green. Green and white. Lovely. Right. So, um, so, how do you know what goes where? Well, uh, to be honest, I can remember them, uh, but sometimes I don't. So, this tool I bought, the crimper, we'll go back to this crimper if Liam just takes a look. If you have a look here on these little diagrams, our diagram is the one that starts with the orange and white at the bottom here. So, if you ever forget, I've always got it on me for those days where I just draw a blank and don't and know what I'm you doing. Know the, you know the connector? Yes. Which way up do you have it? So obviously if you had it up one way up, then orange and white would be at one side. But if you turned it to the other, orange yeah. and white would be the other side. So I how can do you know show you that it? now. I'll just put that down there. If you come to this plug, on these plugs, you always have this little springy bit on the bottom. Yeah. So if you keep that to the bottom, it's yeah. an easy way to remember. Your orange always starts to your left. Ah. And then you just follow that to, uh, well, it's orange, orange and white, green, green and white, and so on and so on. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just leave that plug there. I'm going to get these in the correct order. And the reason why I cut them a bit longer was for this reason here, because if you leave them short, I'll try, come up. Not really hard to grab no nails. Would it be fair to say if you didn't have your glasses on, you wouldn't be able to do this job? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so can, see, can you see how they're all like, like crinkled and yeah. stuff. That's why I left them longer so that I can give them uh -huh. a good pull to straighten them out. So when I push them into the plug at the end, they'll go in a lot easier. Oh, of course, they won't go in if they're. If no, they won't. Curled, no, they? they won't. No. Right. So, so first of all, I've actually forgot totally and utterly now what I'm doing. So if I bring my little tool up, I know that I'm starting with orange and white, um, and orange. Um, so there you go. So them two are in the correct order. Now, if I remember correctly, it is green green and white it's always a solid color and then uh, uh and can i ask you about the length of the cable run john because we're probably about um i would say at least 60 to 70 meters on this length of cable run does that impact the signal strength at all i'm just going to start off by saying by no means i am a professional I have installed cable and is internet. it true that you worked for virgin media i did yes, and yes did you work with liam I work with Liam, yeah, from, from <laughs> Oakwood Garden Rooms. I don't know if you know who he is. So I'll just check this out. So we've got now got the green and white. We've got the orange and white. I usually keep my thumb back here to keep them in the correct order. Look, got see you. where I smack my thumb yeah. at, am I? So this green now is actually not going to be used. We're going to go from green and white. We're now going to go to a solid colour. But like I said, it doesn't really matter because if you go to this tool, um, it, you can't really get it wrong. You just look at the tool and it tells you the way they're going. And as you can see, look how they're all crinkled. So this is why we left them longer. So keeping my thumb crushed on these three cables so they don't get moved and I'll smooth them out. Did you tell us how much the crimping tool cost? I can't remember. That's about 40 quid as well. About 40 now, pound. I have had a cheaper one. You can if you're only going to do it once or twice. On Amazon, they do a cheap kit for about 15 quid and that would work. Yeah. But I find out after three or four jobs, it, it starts to not work. So, so with the crimper, the stripper and the croning tool, which you've yet to show, would you say it would be about 80 pounds? Yeah, yes, about 80 Right, quid, so yeah. let's say it'd be 80 pounds. Now, if you've got a guy out to come and fit your internet for you, I would imagine he'd want 250 plus. Easy. Would he? Yeah, 100%. Right, so is it worthwhile buying the tools and then just banging them out on Facebook Marketplace once you've used them if you don't want to use them again? It, it is, but like I've said, if you're only doing it for one garden room, what's the point? Get the cheap one. It'll do the job perfectly fine right. for one job. But if you're going to use it again, no, just get the better now, one. Now, I remember using a cheap croning tool at Virgin Media and the I, last two minutes. No, I, no, We've I, yet to show the croning tool yet, haven't we? Yeah, well, we're going to do that on the next part. So, sorry I'm a bit slow at this because I'm too busy talking. Um, but we'll, um, we're nearly there now. 
got to keep pulling them nice and firm to stretch them out. We're only probably, like I say, we're only going to probably need that much. Talk to but, me in mil, John. How much mil have you got there, Wiffler? In total, there's about 50 mil, isn't there? Yeah. Maybe something like that. And ultimately, we'll only probably need, you only need, if I just bring this plug, you only need to go from the back of this, sorry, you only need to go from the back of the plug to here, right. so you probably and only I, need I suppose 30 this mil. is the benefit of the push-through ones then, isn't it? Cause yeah, because I can push long. them out of the other side, which you're going to see in a minute, sorry, yeah. and check that they're still in the right order. So what I'm going to do now is, just before I do that, sorry, Liam. Yeah, it's all right, I'm just mm. going to keep popping up to you on that white backdrop so it's a little bit clearer. Right, go on, mate. I'll try to go up here, but it's really hard oh, no, to no, do. No, no, no. So what I'm going to quickly do, I'll just, I mean, I'll do it for the purpose of the video. I'm going to check, I've got orange and white, orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, brown. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop these down because they're too long to get through the tool. So I will chop a load of it off. Not at all. Right, Liam, do you just want to grab them? Because I can't hold this hand, grab all them, right? So they don't always pump Yeah, so they don't always pump floor. Sparky, they just drop them off floor and I'll be, <laughs> off he go. I might have done I'll it video, I wouldn't have done. <laughs> I'll put them in my back pocket so they won't wash them. Right, so way. still keeping them nicely, because yeah, they look quite neat, sorry. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'll try it, so I'll check in my, orange, uh, my spring on my cap is at the bottom. Yeah. And this is really hard to do because I'm going against the... Even harder. So now, right, as well, you can see, they're in. Right, just keep them as still as I'll you can. I'll stay as still as you can. So can you read them off for me, Liam? Tell me um, what they are. I see orange and white. Yeah. Orange. Yeah. Uh, is it blue and white? No, it's green and white. I can't see that. <laughs> yeah, it is green. It water mix with blue and white. It's too far away. Right. Go on. So it's green and white. What else? Blue. Blue and white. Blue and white. Green. green. Brown, brown and white. white. Brown. brown. So you know the idea of these plugs, because they stick out of the other side, you, before I crimp it, I can check the right. If one of them are wrong, I can pull it back off, retwist it, and put it back in again. Right. Okay. Where usually the cables finish here. So then you have to try scope through this little tiny bit here to see if they're in right, which you. you just can't do. So let's get to so the what's magic. What's going to happen to all the little bits now then? They're going to fall on the floor. But usually I'm on the floor when I'm doing it. Uh, am I up for this for the video? So again, if we take a look at the crimpers. Yeah. And so can you see through the back there, Liam, how there's a little blade moving yeah. up and down? Just, yeah. That's well, going to... Yeah, I see that blade going up and down. That's, that's now going to chop the cables. Got so yeah. I need to put it in through the back side here. Yeah. In through this, making sure that so I'm now the checking the little spring luggies at the top. I'm going to put it into here, go around the other side, and as you can see, the cables are all stuck I'm through. I'm now just going to give it a gentle squeeze. Every now and then, some do stay on, but they just pull off afterwards. And if we just, just Liam's just caught them, just I'm just going to do it now. Shot. Sorry. So if you have a look at that now. That is now neatly crimped on, and I'm 99% sure that that will work and every time. What's going to go on with the boot now? I'm now going to get the boot. I'm going to, the boot has a little hump on one side, which is for the spring lug. I don't know if that's the proper name for it, and that is one complete uh, neat RJ, RJ45. Yeah, will, will you now plug that into the mode then, John, or are you uh, going to wait until you test the nope, cable? No, I'm now going to test the cable, so if Liam just moves out of the way, I will now grab this little thing here. So this is a tester. We you can get these cheap. Oh, this is a tester. Yeah. Um, this is actually on here. So what's that silver thing? This silver line. This is actually a cheap one. Um, you can get these on Amazon too. You can get them really cheap in a kit for about fifteen quid. Like I say, they'll do three or four jobs. No worries. What's it actually testing? Is it just continuity? It's testing continuity. So it'll test that the orange is linked to the orange, the green right. and white is linked to the green so and I white. See, and so I on. see eight numbers on there. Yeah. And there's like eight LED strips. Will can, they light up? Yeah. So one will light up, two will light up. If one of them doesn't light up, it means that that cable is not connected. Got you. Now. If you don't know, I've not, they're not actually, I don't know, they're numbered up on it. Yeah, they're labelled up on the crimpers. Can you see there? So number one is orange and white. It's actually labelled up behind. Oh, yeah, see, so yeah. you could actually look at the crimper. I actually know what they are and say it's the orange and white that's not connected. Right. And you could do What's that. What's your success rate, would you say? Now uh, that you've got push-through crimps. Th th these push-through crimps are 100% for me. The only thing is we sometimes use a croning tool, which you're going to see in a minute, and that sometimes doesn't always work. So right. we'll see. So what I'm going to do now, before I go down to the garden office, I'm going to plug this little thing in here, check it's plugged in, and then when I go to the garden office and I put the end on there, I'll plug it into here, I'll turn it on, as you can see. I'm assuming there's a battery in there. There's then. a battery in there, it's a 9 volt, sorry about that. Nothing's happening at the minute because the other end is open, but once I connect it, I'll be able to plug it in here and check we get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Once I get that, I know everything's fine with my cable. If anything doesn't work, I know that I have to dig into the modem settings and sort it there. 
But again, these modems that we use have a thing called access point and it's pretty much zero chance they always work. Um, so just because I, I, we, we glossed over and start, started talking about when we worked at Virgin, this cable runs about 60 to 70 metres long, John. Will that affect the signal strength? Right. No, I, I don't know what the specific range is, but we've done some really big runs. What I do usually, I'll come into the house, I'll do a speed check. If they're on 500 megabits, my, megabytes, megabits, I will test it. When we've put our cable in, no matter how big it is, we put it into the back of our router, we get the self same speed. So my answer is no. Right, okay. So so what, what I'm trying to say is you've got a 70 meter run here, but of course you've got your modem there, but then you've got your cable running to the house, running from the node on the street, running from the main cabinet. It comes from miles away, miles doesn't it? The miles. cables. Isn't so miles another miles. 60, 70 meters properly connected is yeah. not going to affect speed, is it? No. Well, I've never seen it affect the speed, so I'm not going to have some techie guy start putting all his text stuff on. He can, but I've never seen it affect it. So what do you want me to say to you? Right, okay. <laughs> let's, let's go down and look at the modem and the connection in the office then. Tom and Lee. Tom? Uh, hello, you're right. Lee? Yeah. Practically finished now. Is that your last sort of skim off, Tom? Yeah, last trial of my run. And you're away, away to another job? Another job, yeah. Doesn't stop working. <laughs> right, so we're now in the storeroom. This is where the cable actually terminates now. Um, it's a Cat6 first plate and module, but I'll let John talk you through that now. Um, Liam's just told you what, what we're doing. So I've got my Nipex tool again, so I'm going to use this again to strip these cables back. So same again, we've got two little blades on the end. We can just put that on, gently squeeze it, turn it one full turn, go like that, and that tool's now finished with. What now, would you use if you didn't have a Nipex tool, John? Would you use a knife or would you be scared of... Like well, I, I, I did use a knife before, and this is just stiff because it's really cold now, so you just got to warm up the cable a few times. Yeah, you can use a Stanley knife if you're careful and cut the end and then rip it. Ah, uh, yeah, right, but, it, it's, it but you can damage, I have damaged the cables, and that's one of the reasons why I bought that tool. Because I read all reviews and they said, fantastic, works for years, never ruins cables, and I agree with those reviews. So if Liam can see, I've left these quite long. I'm going to push a bit of slack back out on the wall so that we have a service loop. Um, later on in life, if we've got to come back and somebody's damaged it, we could probably pull another 6 to 12 inch back out of the wall and resort it out again. So for this job now, I'm going to use... I'll bring it up here, Liam, you OK? I'm going to use a croning tool and we're going to use this little module here. So there is actually some people. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it. Don't we? Right, we're going again. Right. So if Liam can see this, I'll flip it round anyway. So you can see how the numbers they're actually numbered. So if number two didn't work, remember on the tool that you're going to see in a minute that checks the cables, you'd know that number two was orange. If number four didn't have a connection, you'd know that it was your blue cable. That's how to identify what's wrong. Anyway. There's a, there's a discussion on how long to have these cables. Somebody told me that you can leave them nice and long, it doesn't really matter. And other people say that you have to put a cable tie on here and leave them as small as you can. What I'm going to say again, it makes absolutely no difference how long they are. It really doesn't matter. Me and Liam used to install these cables into muxes and stuff like that at cable, we didn't we? Can, yeah. And they were huge. So. If, if I leave them long and don't put a cable tie on, can I still watch IPTV? 100 percent lovely <laughs> you need a vpn though <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna uh, i'm gonna leave them long because i like them long and i push that back out and it's never caused me an issue so i always start for some reason i always start from number one but if you remember in the house we started off sorry with, john didn't we we started off with orange and white on the crimps and orange and then it went to green and yeah. white so yep. are you going to use the same sort of formula then well yeah but if you look it don't because it goes from green and white and then it and then it jumps to green whereas in the house it didn't did it Got so it's yeah. a bit confusing yeah. but if you just follow the color code you'll be fine they're always color coded up now this is where you're not always guaranteed for them to work when you're croning them in again i do the same with these 
I mean, for the purpose of the video, I'll leave them a bit long. I'm just going to straighten them out again. So if if you do get a fail, which sometimes does happen, doesn't it? You yes. know, you yeah, do. yeah. So is it generally a case of re-croning, or it's, you have to put another RG45 on? With MNs, no. It's this. It's, it's this croning. Right, it, it always is. Now, I'm going to put this number one in here. What, but the reason why I've left it long and get it straight, if you actually get the right, cable... Let's see if we can get a real... Can I go over your head like you that? You can do whatever you want, but and what these, you can actually push these in if you... If you, there, it's actually pushed in now, is right, it? Yeah. If you're skillful enough, which I'm not, you can actually do the all eight. I end up knocking them out. So I do two at once, pull it, it's just clicked in. I'm now going to get the croning tool. Uh, Liam, can right, you see? Let's it? just see if we can. Let's watch discuss the croning, the croning yeah, tool. Let's, let's, let's so on this it. croning tool, the, I'll just press this here. Look, this is the croner there. And at the end here is a pair of scissors. Them little metal pair of scissors, they're going to cut this off. Got you. On the cheap croners, they never work. Right. They never you. cut that got off. You. It just ends up bending. So all I've got to do now is come into this. One minute, one minute. I'll try and do it with you on the, the thing. Can I see it? I'll try going, but yeah, I'm press it in. Yeah. I always do it twice. Did you hear me yeah, do it do, twice? Yeah, and I've seen, and I've seen the bit fall off You can off see as well the bit fall off as well. That is nice and neatly crimped in there. And one more. And two. Right. So that's them two cables in. Now they some... look like they're going in the others to me. Yeah, though, they, do, they do, Liam. They're not actually in it though. They're just, okay. they're just, they're just sitting top, so right, you can push right, them out right, that right, way. Right. So once you've done it, you just pull them out of the way. Okay. Go back to your neck. So now we need green and white and green. Leave that there. They do always press into that other side, a right tiny bit. They just pull out. So four pairs of wires. Yeah. So there's eight cables in total. And once we've done this, we can just plug our tester in and all eight, we should get all eight signals. So again, they are, look how jagged they are. So I always give them, if you leave yeah. them long, you can just give them a little pull and they go good. So you're going to stay back for this one probably a bit. Don't yeah, well, quicker. that's it. So again, put the green in. You can actually feel it click in um, when you go like this. You can, there, it's just clicked in. If you do that, they always go. If you really don't want to crap chop it in the other side, you can bend the cables up like that. Could you use a kitchen butter knife to push them in? <laughs> I don't know, we'll try if you want. I know with a cable, when the tools used all to kinds. when the screw the, the cables used to break, we use Stanley knife blades and a little yeah. ordinary screwdriver. So we yeah, we've done some stuff when we worked at cable to be honest. <laughs> um so we're now on the brown and brown and white. See, if you remember on the other cable, these actually went in last, but on this they don't. But they are still corresponding the right numbers, so. Turn this upside down. We'll put brown and white. I'm doing, I'm gonna do the zoom in that I hate, John, where well, there's no transition. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, but it does show close up what you're doing. I know Apple should bring out where you press it and it nice and smoothly zooms in, shouldn't it? Because it is a good feature. Right, so we're on the last two cables, which is a blue, blue and white. When I've done this, then I will plug my tester in and check everything's working. Sorry about that noise, it's the plasterer. So we didn't do a video yesterday, John, why not? Because we had to get finished for the plasterer. Uh, Somebody was in a bad mood. And, right? Yeah, so we, we, we couldn't do it. So we do apologise. Right, so. Right, have you got all eight croned in now? All eight are croned in. How much is the croning tool? The croning tools are about 15 quid. You can put a cable tie through there now and through this and then you can cable tie them. But I'm not going to do it while we see if it works. So if I got this, we'll use my cheap one. Let's see. So what, what have you just done with that lead now? What's that so there? this is now plugged into the side of the bit of the tester. This actually has the power. So if you remember up the other side, we've got the other side of this connected. Right. So I'm now going to plug this into this. And I see you've made that lead yourself. Yeah, I right. have, yeah. Has the lead failed before and you thought it was your connection on your internet? Yeah, loads of times. <laughs> and these have gone faulty as well. And, and I'm sat messing around for half an hour, 40 minutes, crimping different ends on and all sorts. And that's, you know, the cheap pliers that you use to crimp these on. Mm. They break sometimes and they'll have you sat there for hours as well wondering what's going on. You keep chopping them on, off and putting them on again and think, I can't put 10 on. Buy cheap, buy twice. Yeah, yeah. Is um, that plugged in, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and this lead has seen better for days. So shall we uh, have a test? Let's go to on. I'll speed it up a bit, go on. So, so as you can see, we're going to go to... Some, oh, hang on, just check that. So something's wrong with number one, look. Great, perfect. So that's it, it's, number, it's only number one. Right. right, so let's try so crawling it. Number, try one crawling. Didn't, number one didn't illuminate there, did it? So no. that's telling you that There's orange and white, am I right? It was orange and white, orange yes, Liam. White, yeah. So I'm pretty confident that it's not my plug. So I'm going to just re on this number one in here and we'll try again. I might have pulled it out or something daft. That's what I said, sometimes you can actually. Let's try it again. Number one's there straight away, look. Right, so let's start at the top then. Call them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so basically, number one won't lit lighting up, so it's telling you there was a problem with the orange and white light. You're Correct. confident where you push through RG4. See how I guaranteed oh, it, wasn't yeah. that, was it? <laughs> so it was just a case of re in that in and they're yeah. all good. Yeah. So, what, so what you're saying now, what, what have you proved now by doing that? Basically, I've proved that our cable is 100% working. So I will also test it again when this all goes into the wall. So in a we minute. now have a good connection from guaranteed, the house guaranteed. to the garden room. Yes. Right. What are we going to use to make the internet work down here? We're going to use this little router here. Right. Do you want to talk about it, John? Yeah, yeah. These are fantastic. These. This is a, a TP Link AC1750 archer c7 it's it's got gigabit ports on it so it means any internet that's out now it's going to work it might change in five years when they get faster what internet. kind of speed will that handle oh a, a gigabit oh. yeah and, and most people are on 100 meg 200 meg 500 i'm on 500 does 500 can we watch down. iptv you can again <laughs> VPN, Nord, I recommend Nord. Right, but anyway, there you go. And this router is really easy to set up. I'll show you now, in a minute, how I'm going to set it up and why we use this brand. I'm not saying that this is the only router in the whole wide world. Hold on, so is it a router or a router? Well, router, router, whatever you want to call it. Router. Some people call them routers, routers. It is a router, actually. No, Hands a router, in it? How, how much, roughly, would that be? They're about eighty pound, aren't they? Right. Yeah, about eighty pound. Um, it has got five gigahertz band and two point four gigahertz band. Cut a long story short, two point four gigahertz has a longer range, but you get less speed. Five gigahertz is much faster, but you've got to be a lot closer to it. Anyway, I'll just connect this to the wall and I'll show you how I set this up and why we use this model. Right, if you're going to watch any of these videos and you want a free drill, then you need to watch this video right to the end and I'll give you information how I'm going to get a free drill sent to you. Right, so... Ooh. <laughs> uh, so now I'm going to clip this bit in, so you can see I've clicked in the front. Every now and then it's it's done happen a lot. Sometimes the cable can pull out. Right. So we will also put a tester on one more time just to make sure that we've not um in. There you go. We just plug it in the hole. Did you not have it in the hole, John? No, I didn't have it Did in the hole. Did you have tipping? Oh, yeah, I just had to basically I've pulled out. There's no connection on the end of it, Liam, it just pulls out. It's an old lead, look. It hasn't got, you know, the springy bit on the end? That's what causes it to lock when it goes in. I forgot to tell you that. I haven't got one because I'm poor, so I just press it in. So as you can see, we'll just go one more time. I'll speed it up there. So we, this is the final chapter now. We know 100% if the internet doesn't work, it's not our cable, it's something else. Right, we'll now unbox the modem and I'll take you... Let's give it a little look inside. We need this lead here, which is the Ethernet cable, which goes into the blue part on the back of the modem, which I'll show you in a minute anyway. Um, and then we're going to put it into the wall up there. Liam has generously put some screws in the wall, haven't you, Liam? Why have we chose this? Um, I'm going to talk about it now, yeah. So, this router in particular, Liam can come up and get close. We have this blue port on it. Now, I don't know if they're all blue on every single router, but this one supports access point. Now, I've spoke about this before, and somebody were jumping up saying, you can do this, you can do that. And I'm not saying you can't, but I use it because of access point. 99% of the time, 
I can plug it to this blue port, I can go into the router settings, which I'm going to show you in a minute on the phone, put it into access point, restart it and the internet works every time. There's no clash with IPs or the internal Virgin routers or the BT or the Sky. That's why we use this one in particular. Not because it's special, it just has that function on, easy to set up and you know we're all about speed. We like to get it going, we like fast internet and we like to leave fast also. Right. Um, so now we will plug this one in. Still going, Liam. Yeah. Right, so we're now going to get the Ethernet cable. Have we got where's the power? Just there, John. This one's a bit different to usual because we've not actually got proper power yet. So we've got an extension plugged in on the floor. So this cable has got the nice springy lug on, which means when I put it in here, it's not going to pull out. There you go, look, it won't pull out. That's the idea of the little lug. And we'll put it, as I've just stated, in the blue port. And I, we've said what modem it is, haven't we? So if anybody wants one, they know the model number of it. Don't you? They're on Amazon. They sell them on Amazon. No, they're not, because they'll sell out and we won't be again. Right, OK. They're not available on Amazon anymore. <laughs> right, OK, but that's fine. We will let you know when we decide to use the next model up, because there's a few of these models. We'll let you know which one that is. So if you ever want to use the same one as us, uh, you can. So this is the power port on the back. A little silly, I know, but we're going to plug the power in. So this is pretty much the modem setup. What we need to do now is get power to it. And let's show you what I'm going to do on the phone. That'll just hang there anyway, it'll be fine. I need some bit of hold this for me, please. I need to get my phone out. So I'll just turn it this way. Turn the power on. I'm going to wait so many seconds. How many? How many it, it, I, I don't know, it'll be about a minute. So you can see how it's all flashing. What, what will happen now is, in a minute's time, around a minute, we'll get two lights come on here, two light little Wi-Fi looking lights. That means the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz is, is working. We will also have a port lit up here. And sometimes the internet just works without doing nothing. You don't have to do anything. Like magic. Like magic. But what, uh, this probably will work now, and I'll show you how to know whether it's working without doing anything. We get like a little globe, which works on this blue part here. We get like a little globe, and it'll either be orange or green. If it's orange, it means there's a problem. Bearing in mind, we know it's not as cable, so it's a setting inside here or inside the customer's modem. Um, but if it goes green, we know it's working. Oh. So, so these are these two. So now it'll flash for a little bit, and I'll just show you what happens next. But regardless whether we have the internet here or not, uh, Liam, I'm still going to go in and set it up to access point and restart it and leave it in that situation because it can clash when the turn that people connect to the inside it causes a clash with IP addresses um, and stuff like that. Would you recommend people use, um, rather than going down this route, obviously it's long winded, there's a lot more work involved, what about these mesh systems? Are they any good John? <laughs> Fantastic, yeah I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> Liam's nodding. Yeah, no, they're good. Well the only difference between a mesh system and this Liam, you can actually use this in mesh mode by the way. Mm -hmm. This has mesh on it. Yeah, what I'm on about is you know you know like in my house I've got the nodes, so they've got one node and it bounces off another node and I've still yeah. got crap internet in my house, haven't I? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but so the... a lot of people say, Oh, I mean that's great down garden, but would you recommend that they just rely on that or would you hardwire it to No, a, I'd always a especially for what we're doing and this hardwiring, you can't beat hardwiring, even on a mesh system, if you could run a cable to each one of your nodes, that's the ticket. It. because the, when you're going wirelessly from one node to another you're still working wi-fi whichever way you slice it at you yeah. so so if if i wanted to have an office and this was going to be in my office then um could i hardwire into that rather than running my imac off wi-fi yeah Right. Yeah, well, this now has ports on the back, so once we're live here, we don't have to use Wi-Fi. We can plug into the back of this and go into the... Oh, sorry. We can plug into the back of the router and then go straight into the iMac, which I do at my house. Um, but anyway, for some reason, we're not getting a light. It must take a bit longer. Probably wrong on 60 seconds. can fast-forward this bit. Right, I've just realised we're getting no internet light. Now, there is a problem. If you remember, we put the tester on the other side, so he's not even plugged into his modem. So we're all laughing out loud, and Dave has just gone up the garden to go plug the cable in. We should see in a minute a light will come on here like a little globe, and it'll flash orange, and hopefully it'll turn to green. But even if it does, I'll still show you a quick way of connecting to this router and setting it up in access point. 
comes on and will you it will it, it should light immediately up when David plugs in yeah <laughs> <laughs> I actually clicked I thought where's light and then I remembered <laughs> Yeah, it's on, look, the globe. Right, so if Liam can see that, you can see the little globe has come on. So that tells me that we've now got a connection. But it is orange, so it means it's not working. So you could do as many tests and connect as many times as you want, but it's not actually working. But can you just see how it's gone green, Liam? So let's actually just do this one no, once. We're going to do a speed test. I am going to, though, restart and put it in access point. Oh, I'll just connect to him first. Hang on. Where's my Tether app? You need this app, it's called Tether. It's for TP links only, is this app. You can download it on iOS or Android. So if I open this app, it's now asking me to look for a router. Now you can look for it, or you can just click this little plus button here, click wireless router, just select anything, because basically I'm going to, I'm going to scan the code. So I'm just going to skip through all this. Doesn't really matter, just hit next, next, next. And in a minute, I'll get an option to scan for the code. Here we go. So you can see now it's asking me to scan for the code. Can you see it? Yep. So now what I'm going to do is, oh, the internet's gone off again. Let's see if it comes back on. That might be why we didn't find it. Somebody on oh, I can't hold my phone and, and do it. The screen again. So it's not finding it. Sometimes you get little bugs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Wi-Fi. I'm going to look for it, and Jen's going to read me the code on the bottom because I have no chance of reading it. Not unless um, you have to flip right, it around. It's right. Wi-Fi password. Shall it's I? The numbers. One minute, one minute, because it's customer's password. Right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop the sound off in this yeah. now, so we don't oh, yeah. read the password out. The pin, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't really matter anyway. Not unless someday. So if Liam's going to go back up again now, we're now going to connect to it. Then we can do a speed test. Right, and the router's still green or router, whatever you want to call it. So if we now go to the speed test, click go. We'll click go. And he's on Virgin Media, look. Got 34 ping. Right, so can you see how the speed's a little bit slow? I've not actually run a speed test in his house on this one. I'm assuming he's on quicker internet than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quit this test and I'm going to go put the router into access point and rerun it again and see if it's faster. Please. So we'll go back to the app now. Oh, Liam, I'll have to put up another password in here. It'll ask for, right, for right. the I'll password see. for the same. So, you can't tell me when you're going to do it, and then I'll, I'll stop. So, it. We're in, again. so we're in the app now, and we've hit the plus icon, and you can see we're now showing the, the router. It's a Archer C7, which it says on the box. Now, this password now is just asking for a password for the settings only. Right. It's not the password. Again, I'm going to just stop the Make video sure. while we put the password in. I just, just wait for it to go, yeah. So hopefully now, this will now, I've created the password successfully. So is that just a password that was on the bottom of the box, John, or a password that you've made up yourself? No, I've made it up myself. It's just for the settings of this. Right. The customer's not very tech savvy, so I put a password that I know. So if any of them ever ring me up and say, look, I need to do this or I need to do that, I know the password straight away over the phone. I can tell them it and they can go into it. So you can see the next screen's come up now. So if we hit auto detect, we know the internet's actually working because we've just tried it, but... We, it doesn't really matter what these settings are. You can choose anything you like because I'm going to go in and change it into the access point anyway. So we'll just go next. Um, we'll use the default settings. Oops, I'll just uh, go next. I'll, I'll, I'll quit. Liam, I won't even panic anyway. I'll change it, the, the past W. Uh, so if we hit apply now, it's going to apply all the settings. We're using the default name and the minute and the default password. Liam's panicking, but I will change the password for his Wi-Fi anyway. So it really doesn't matter. This stage here, if you get the wrong one of these, can be a real nightmare and take you a few hours to do it, if not more. What's well, the longest you've been in somebody's house, John? Um, it was on a mesh system. And yeah. why has that gone orange? Well, it shouldn't have done, but it might be just restarting now while we're applying these settings. 
Right, so this now, if you have a look now, it's asking me connect to 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. I'm going to connect to 5 because 5 is faster and I'm quite close to the modem. Um, and just check cables in properly. Check. We'll go out. It's green again. Yeah, but this light, Liam, shouldn't be doing that. It shouldn't be going orange and green. That tells me there's a conflict somewhere. So if we go today, they'll be ringing you up in a few days, going, the internet's intermittent, and it can be causing theirs to go off in the house. So we need to be quick here and actually change this. So if we now come up, this is actually complete, but no, it's not complete. I will bind later. I'm now going to go up here. Oh, no. Hold on. It's complete, but it's not complete. No, it's not complete because I'm going to go change it into the... Into, if we press this icon on the right-hand side, the tools, you'll see down here we have an, a thing that says operation mode. If I click that now, remember we've talked about access point, access point, access point. At the minute, it's set in wireless router mode. We don't want that because it can conflict with us in the house. If I now put it to this mode here, hit save, reboot. That will all reboot now, it'll all go off, we'll have to wait for it to all come on again. It'll reboot and it'll be set correctly and I guarantee that it'll work absolutely spot on. We'll never get a call. Will no. the conflict have stopped now that yes. you've put it into access yeah. mode? Yeah, because all it's doing is, it's I mean I'm not really that tech savvy, but it's taking the internet, sending it into here, um, like it's just like an extension. Do you know, like if you just had a, an extender down here or something like that. So. Liam will see now the box has rebooted and now it'll have to go through and bring the lights back on and it'll tell me once it's finished that I'm complete here and that's the setup complete. I'll try to run the test again. I'm hoping that we should get more than 50 meg unless for some reason he's got a bad line. Do you know um, what meg is on that? Oh. I don't, but I am going to check it right. after this. But I guarantee it won't be our fault anyway. I'm assuming that it'll be on that up there or it was a conflict and it'll speed up in a minute. No, I'll just I'll quit the app now. You don't actually need the app now. It's complete. We've just got to wait for this to restart. I'm sure Liam will skip this part. Right. Well, it's well, it's rebuilding, John. Have you got jellies and cable to I show? Have, yeah. If you damage the cable, what can be done rather than rebuilding? Clip that wall if you can. The yeah. full 60, 70 meter cable run. Yeah, I'll just show you that. No problem. So we need a pair of pliers. Yeah. Obviously, this would be your cable that is damaged. Hold it down here, down here. Right, okay. That would right. be your cable right. that is damaged. So, so let's say, let's say you've hit with a hammer, you've damaged it, or maybe these, we'll use these chewed through it or something like that. Right. So we'll use these greens here. And you don't want to pull another seventy meter length of cable. Yeah. And 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 I know people are going to say you shouldn't do it, but it's a very very common fix. Are these they're called jellies? So let's say these two green cables that you've cut through them, and we need to rejoin them. This is a jelly. Inside this, there's like two little razor clips, which we crush them with a pair of pliers and it nips into the cable. It also has silic, like a silicon jelly inside. So when you squeeze it, it also waterproofs itself, which is fantastic. Me and Liam know a lot about these because when we were for Virgin Media, we used to use them all the time. So all you do is put one wire in one side, one wire in the other of side. Of course, you'd join the same colour wires, though, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm just using just two wires there. Well, you can get some proper things called jelly I pliers. See, you can see the jelly. Oh, let me move my hand. Right, Keep you ready? I'll go a bit further. Well, there you go, you're in now. Eh? Yep. There you go. Do you see it squeeze out? Yep. So now that's like a silicon jelly. So once that goes off, that is also airtight. There's no water going to get in it. And that's how to fix a broken cable. Right, Jen, how we get right? So if we just take a quick look here again, you can see at the minute we've got an orange world, but it should change uh, to green. Well, it will change to green, right? So, <coughs> so Jen? Right, so we've gone green. If you look at my phone, you can see I have a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, I'll just download some movies. Should we get IPTV, Liam? Uh, where's the speed test? We'll try it again now, see if it's improved in it. Go. Right, it's bugged out that, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restart the app. It's probably because we've got a different IP. Right, I'll try there. The joys of the internet. Here, watch. It's good that it's bug lame because sometimes you have to do stuff so like what have this. I turn the Wi Fi on and off on my phone just because sometimes it. There you go. Look, look, there's the speed. You see the speed? There's the proof in the pudding. See how it was 50 something meg on the, when it wasn't in access point? Well, can we watch IPTV, John? Oh, Jesus, we'll watch 10 of them now. We can watch it at other people's houses. So, so you can see we got 539 down, and you saw when it wasn't in access point, even though it worked, 
We got 40 or something. Something ridiculous we got on it, didn't we? There you go. Should we run it again? Let's have a look at the ping. It was 34 before, wasn't it? Now it's 15. Look at that. Perfect. So those of you who said access point don't do anything. The proof's in the speed test. We would say put in, but no, the speed test. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll send you to Liam. Right, so you've watched us put the base in, you've watched the roof go on, you've watched the walls go up, you've now watched John connect the internet successfully. Tom has been in with Lee and he's skimmed this and it is flat as a mirror. A beautiful finish. This will be dry enough for us now. It's, it's what we now were, uh, October almost, aren't we? Tuesday we'll be coming back here now to second fix the electrics. The doors are coming Wednesday, so we'll take off these slate buttons which we've put on as well, um, and the doors will butt up to them reveals, which is nicely plastered, same as this as well, and we'll have a window sill on there as well, but we like to put that bead on there so we've got a nice little finish under there. So that's the build as far as we will go. Tony is coming to connect up electrically on Wednesday, so... They've already done as far as they can with second fix. We've put the lights in there. We've done the consumer unit. We're all ready to go on that. Right. So if you've been watching this and you've been following us, we gave away a free drill last month. And I told you I'm going to try and do it as long as the funds can enable me to, to try and give something free away once a month. Just as a little thank you for all the people that support the raffles and for all the people that follow us on YouTube as well. Right. It's a DeWalt, it's 18 volt, and it has got two 4 amp batteries and a charger. It is going to be free of charge, all I require. And I will post this, I will go out on the limb here, I will post this anywhere in the world, guaranteed. Right, what I need you to do is send me a self-addressed envelope, just like you did last time, back to the old school. This is my address, it must say this on the envelope, free raffle. The reason why I want it to say free raffle is so that I have to go through all my mail. If it doesn't say free raffle, it's going in the bin, yeah? Right, so self-addressed self envelope with your name and address on as well. Now, put a stamp on it because at least five people last time didn't put a stamp on it and then the post office came to me looking for money and I ain't paying that, come on, it's too far. Right, free raffle, 8 Hetton Road, Leeds, LS8, 2RT. You have until next Thursday to get your entry in and then Jen will pick the winner and I will post this anywhere in the world to the winner and we will, we will draw it next Friday then, yeah? So that's it, self-addressed envelope, put a stamp on it, make sure you get post. Post are on strike today and possibly tomorrow but you've got all next week and entries will close on Thursday after the postman has been okay thanks for watching please like and subscribe i will possibly get back on the camper this weekend if the repair kit has come for the window okay so please like and subscribe and we will see you on the next one thank you